everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. Today we're going to talk about 5G technology. It's kind of all the rage right now. You hear about it. It's mobile phone, cell phone uh, network technology. And today we just wanted to introduce you to this and talk about what it is and, uh, and maybe why it's important. So 5G uh, stands for fifth generation mobile network. And this comes on the heels of 4G LTE. Uh, so 4G is fourth generation. LTE, by the way, stands for long-term evolution. And when you're on your cell phone, your mobile phone, you know, you see 4G or maybe LTE, and that's like the super fast stuff that we've got right now. Um, and of course, that, that came about after 3G, and you may still see some 3G spots out there uh, with your cell phone today. Um, and then you can go all the way back to like 1G, frankly, all the way, way back when. Um, but nonetheless, 5G is coming up, and uh, frankly, the, the 5G standards and technical specifications, all of that stuff has to be developed by somebody. You, I mean, you can't just have a, hey, let's just do 5G. Well, what does that really mean, right? And what, what group is in charge of developing what that looks like? Um, there's three main groups that I'll mention. One is the ITU. It's the International Telecommunications Union. So they, they work hard at developing a lot of standards and, you know, again, what is this all going to look like? Um, there's also the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, which does a whole lot of work on a lot of stuff, right? And then finally, there's another group called 3GPP. It's the Third Generation Partnership Project. Uh, so these are three of the main groups that develop the technical specifications, the standards, and all of the underlying foundation, you know, um, details and definitions and all that stuff of what 5G is going to look like. So one of the questions too is why do we need to go to 5G? And, uh, and part of the answer is that the, the, the mobile experience is growing right now in the world. Uh, back in a few years ago, probably five, six years ago, uh, back in 2014, there were about 7 billion connected devices in the world. Um, and back then, about five, six years ago, a lot of experts predicted that by the year 2020, there would be probably 25 billion connected devices. This is the whole Internet of Things. This is everybody's got a cell phone and a, you know, all kinds of connected devices, right? Well, here we are by the end of 2019. We can say now there's already over 26 billion connected devices. So that prediction was a little bit low. And now people are saying probably by the end of 2020, by the end of this uh, current year, there may be 30 billion plus connected devices uh, on the internet. So anyway, so there's just a massive amount of connectivity that's going on. And, uh, and so we need reliable and fast infrastructure to handle all of that. And that's where 5G comes in. All right, so a few, a few key components of 5G is uh, what I'm gonna call multiple bands of wavelength. So I'll just put uh, up here, I'll put multiple, um, wavelength. So we'll say wavelength. Okay, what 5G, uh, again, goes, going back to those, that, those groups that are defining what all this stuff looks like, what, uh, what 5G is going to be able to take advantage of is uh, multiple, um, you know, wavelength chunks of the electromagnetic spectrum. If you've ever seen a picture of the allocation of, of wavelengths in the, uh, the spectrum, it's, it's very congested and there's a lot of stuff going on there. And so 4G LTE has its own chunk of wavelengths that it's allowed to use. Um, but what 5G is going to be able to do is take advantage of uh, what I'll say is sub six gigahertz. Uh, that's a Z right there. And then also beyond that, there's actually several chunks of wavelengths in the spectrum that it's gonna be able to use. Uh, but also I'll say from about 24 to about 80, we'll say 85, this is not exact, but 24 to about 85 uh, gigahertz wavelengths as well. And then um, beyond that, I'm going to say there's a high and then medium and then low um, frequency that 5G technology is going to be able to take advantage of. One of the interesting things about wavelengths, just in general, this is just kind of the physics of wavelengths, right? Is that when you have a wavelength, let's, I'll draw a couple of different examples here. If you have like a really, really tight one, let's say like that, as compared to like a really, uh, you know, maybe one that does this kind of a thing, right? The physical characteristics of a higher frequency wavelength like this one is that you can cram a lot more data onto 
a higher frequency wavelength like this, right? Uh, but then the, the, the lower wavelengths, you're not going to be able to put as much data on there. So then you may say, well, why don't we just always use these higher frequencies, right? Part of it is frequency allocation, uh, but another huge part of it is, uh, is just the physics behind it all. These, these small or, or high frequency wavelengths, they can't travel very far, and also they can't go through stuff. Like if you're inside of a building or behind a tree or, you know, if it's, if it's a cloudy day or whatever, then these wavelengths just can't penetrate through those physical barriers very well at all. Whereas these lower, uh, you know, wavelengths, these longer wavelengths are able to penetrate through solid objects a whole lot better. So what 5G is going to be able to do is take advantage of high, medium, and low level frequencies uh, to be able to, to optimize the amount of data that's transferred and also the distances that it needs to travel and all of that stuff. So, um, so anyway, so it's, it's going to be able to, to take advantage of things that previous generations of mobile networking were not, a, were not able to take advantage of. As a consequence of this, um, a lot of people are, of course, interested in speed. Like, hey, Frank, you know, a lot of people probably are like, I don't really care what frequency you operate at. Just, you know, let me download my YouTube video or whatever, right? I want to watch this Lightboard lesson on my mobile phone. Um, so one of the cool things about the speed of 5G is that the, the specification as it's written, at least today, says that it will have 20 gigabits per second uh, download, so that's, I'll put down, and then uh, 10 gigabits per second up, upload. Upload's always slower than download. Um, anyway, the phenomenal thing, or the very interesting thing about this is that's 20 gigabits per second. Uh, I just did a speed test, I've got some pretty fast internet, and, uh, and I was able to get like 150 megabits per second download speed, which is, you know, uh, relatively fast nowadays. Um, and then actually I was able to get like 80 or 90 uploads, so it's really, really quick. Well, when you look at that, that's, that's megabits per second, by the way, and that's on like my Wi-Fi and all that stuff. So we're talking about gigabits per second, so this is much, much faster than, uh, than certainly 4G LTE. 4G LTE, by the way, is about 10 megabits down, and you might get like 5 megabits up on 4G LTE. So again, you're talking about an order of magnitude higher and even more than that, frankly. So, uh, so anyway, so the speed of 5G is going to be absolutely enormous, so that's awesome. Um, another characteristic is, uh, of 5G is what I'll, what I'll put as uh, massive, massive MIMO. Massive MIMO. MIMO stands for multiple input, multiple output. So in, in base stations or antennas today, what happens is um, you, have, you have a lot of different um, antennas, frankly, in these base stations. So you're driving down the road, you see this big tower that's like a cell phone you know, tower, and there's a lot of different antennas in there. And, uh, and so you know, those antennas are operating at different frequencies with these different wavelengths and all that. What 5G, what 5G is going to be able to bring or will bring is what's called massive MIMO, which means there's even more antennas in these base stations. Uh, it provides improved coverage. Um, it provides, frankly, more than just that. It's higher capacity. So now, if you've got if you've got a thousand different um, you know internet connected devices, maybe you just got a lot of people. They've all got a cell phone, and then some of them have an internet connected car, and everybody's wearing their watch that's connected to the internet. Anyway, you get the idea. There's all these you know thousands and thousands of internet connected things that are going through this antenna. Um, there's more capacity that's going to be able to be handled in 5G as compared to what's able to happen today in 4G LTE. So anyway, so there's massive MIMO, which is a good thing. So again, improved coverage, higher capacity. One of the things, though, is you need more antennas uh, whenever you're dealing with, uh, with 5G. So if you have, I'll just draw like a, maybe a really quick picture here. Let's say, you, you know, you have some buildings right here, and this is a, you know, this is a city or whatever it is, and um, just, you know, whatever. And then maybe you've got some, uh, some cars that are driving here and you got people with their cell phone out and they're talking. Um, and then, you know, as it stands today, you may have like some big antenna, uh, right here that has, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
broadcasting all the you know cell signal kind of a thing, um, which is great. <clears throat> and if it's this is great, and if it's working on lower frequencies, like I talked about before, maybe those frequencies can penetrate the walls of the buildings and all the different stuff, and it's not as big of a problem. But now with the smaller frequencies um, or the higher frequencies, I should say, they can't penetrate as many. Uh, buildings and trees and clouds and all that stuff, you're going to need a lot more antennas. So you're going to have to have, you know, an antenna here. Um, you're going to have to have one here. You're going to have to have one here. So, and then maybe on the ground or whatever. So, you know, in a, certainly in like, like in a big city, you're going to have a lot of different antennas going on in order to be able to handle all this stuff. One of the things that's interesting too, and the, the next thing I'll mention about 5G is a uh, technology that's called beam forming. So beam forming, all right? One of the cool things about beam forming is if you can imagine this uh, antenna, uh, which that's not a great picture of an antenna, but you understand the idea. One of the, one of the just the physical characteristics of the way that these antennas work is that they, that they just broadcast the signal out and it just goes in every direction, right? So it's not like, it's only, it's not like the uh, you know, signal can just point right at this car, right at that one little cell phone right there. It's just broadcast everywhere. Well, one of the things that's cool with uh, 5G is beam forming. You can actually start to direct the beam. So you know, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll use this one right here. And if this guy needs to get to this person, um, then he can you know, direct the beam, as it were, toward that one location. Another really cool thing that happens with some beam forming, and again, this gets pretty complex, but the idea is this, that let's say, let's say that this antenna right here uh, needs to get to this person, and for some reason it can't just go straight to him. What it's able to do is bounce beams, or bounce this, uh, you know, the, the waves off of other objects so that then they will come in and hit the correct location that they're, that they're aiming for. So let's say there was like a big tree or something like that in the way and it, this thing couldn't get to it, but it could bounce the beam. So the beam forming, not only can it just point at the location, it can also use different physical characteristics or um, you know, physical things that are actually blocking it to kind of bounce around. And then, of course, you amplify that, or you know, times a thousand and a million or whatever. There's all kinds of beams just bouncing everywhere, but they're able to come together at the location that they need to come together at in order to uh, provide the proper amount of coverage and capacity and all the things that we talked about. So, beam forming that's a that's a really cool one. Um, and then the the last thing that I'll mention is full duplex. So, full duplex. This is a cool technology. Um, in that antennas today with like 4G LTE are able to either transmit or receive. So they call them transceivers, transmit and receive. But they can either transmit on a frequency or they can receive on a frequency, but not the same, but they can't transmit and receive at the same time on the same frequency. Uh, so they either have to use a different frequency, uh, which means, you know, this is whole multiple input, multiple output, diff more antennas that are going on, like even in the phones, these different objects or whatever. Um, anyway, you can, so typically what they'll do is they'll transmit on one frequency and then receive on a different frequency, um, but that takes up spectrum, that takes up, you know, this, all these wavelengths and all that stuff. It just starts to congest everything. What, uh, what these really smart people have been able to do, though, with 5G is they've said, hey, we figured out a way uh, with some silicon chips and some other really cool technology to transmit and receive on the same channel at the same time, on the same frequency at the same time. And so what that allows you to do is just gain even more capacity um, and frankly speed things up significantly. That's part of why we can achieve some of these really, really fast speeds right here. So full duplex is going to be part of the standard for 5G uh, infrastructure. And so these are a lot of the uh, characteristics or the, you know, the things that we are looking forward to when it comes to 5G. There's a, uh, there, you know, when, when you talk about kind of a, Kind of a global perspective on 5G. Everybody's going to be headed this direction. There's there's a, a race, as it were, uh, by companies to build out their 5G network. So you can imagine, you can't just flip the switch and say, "Hey, I want to use the exact same technology I have today with these 4G capable antennas and you know re repeaters and all that different stuff," and just say, "Hey, suddenly it's 5G." You can't do that. You have to actually go in and build this out, you know, replace technology, replace infrastructure and hardware and all that kind of stuff, right? So there's a lot of companies that are racing right now to be the first to market to say, hey, we're going to be 5G. Um, it's also really cool 
from a manufacturing perspective to say, <clears throat> to say, hey, who's going to manufacture all this stuff? Who's going to manufacture the antennas and all that kind of stuff? So, you know, you may have like the United States saying, hey, we've got companies that are doing this stuff, or maybe China's got other ones that are doing this stuff. Who in the world is going to be, you know, the first to market all that stuff? Uh, also, I'll point to this little mobile phone right here. From a mobile phone provider perspective, uh, the mobile phone manufacturers like Apple or Samsung or LG or Google or whatever, they're going to have to update their hardware in order to be able to talk at the 5G spectrums, right? And so as it stands today, Apple, none of the iPhones are 5G capable as of like the, like the iPhone 10, like the X, R, XS, that kind of stuff. Even the 11, I don't believe is 5G capable, but uh, Apple has iPhones coming out in, uh, in the year 2020, <clears throat> and those should be 5G capable. Samsung and LG already have some 5G capable phones, which is great and all, but if you have a 5G capable phone and you're not in a location that has all this 5G infrastructure built out, then it doesn't really do you any extra good. I mean, it's, it's not like it's bad, but you're not going to realize the full benefit of it. Um, but anyway, but as, you know, as we move forward, the cell phone manufacturers are going to get to that point. Um, the service providers are going to build out this infrastructure, <clears throat> and that's the direction we're going to head. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, as we look at these speeds, you can imagine that, you know, I mentioned a minute ago that I did a speed test on my Wi-Fi, you know, laptop or whatever, and I was able to get like 150 megabit per second download and like, you know, 100 up. If I can do 20 gig down and 10 gig up, <clears throat> I don't need Wi-Fi anymore, right? I just need my cell phone or I need some kind of 5G capable device or chip or whatever inside my laptop and then, you know, forget the, forget the Wi-Fi, right? So that may be the direction we're headed as well. So there's just a lot, of, a lot of really interesting, a lot of really cool things coming with 5G. And again, we just wanted to make sure that you were um, educated on this, that you were informed as to, as to what's coming. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of excitement going on out there. There's, of course, issues that could start to creep in here. You can imagine there's, uh, you know, with, it's, it's not all good. There's, there could be some nefarious activity that could start to happen here. So just a really cool thing to kind of keep your eye on and, uh, and stay informed about. So, hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. <clears throat> if you like this thing, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.